this presentation today focus on our recent paper, which is about NSG mice reconstituted with peripheral blood mononuclear cells from patients with Crohn's disease that reflect the human pathological phenotype. Our group mainly work on inflammatory bowel disease or IBD, and this disease is characterized as an idiopathic chronic inflammatory disorder of the gastrointestinal tract. And it is caused by the disruption of the immune homeostasis, which is explained in this picture here. So after an injury caused by an environmental trigger, like an, uh, an infection, for example, the immune system will clear the pathogen via an inflammation. And then there is an on, um, then, sorry, <laughs> then um, it downregulates itself. So there is a complete healing without residual tissue damage. In contrast, when there is, uh, um, yeah, an, sorry, in contrast, when there's an, um, there's no functional immune homeostasis, as it's the case in IBD, there's an ongoing immune response, so a chronic inflammation. And IBD can be subdivided into two types. So there's um, ulcerative colitis, or UC, and Crohn's disease, or CD. And in the past, research showed that even both types are characterized with almost the same symptoms. The responsible cellular mechanism as well as the affected areas are different. So, for example, in UC patients, it is described by a superficial mucosa inflammation, whereas in CD patients, inflammation penetrates transmurally and is often connected to fibrosis. And then there's the cellular difference, which is one focus of our work. And to investigate this, we have different approaches. So we do immune profiling of IBD patients to investigate which cells are involved and therefore to be able to identify novel therapeutic targets. Then we have the disease map to understand connections and also predict mechanistic side effects. And the animal model with which we have higher translability uh, to clinical trials. And with all that, our goal is to reduce the risk in clinical development. And two of these approach, uh, approaches were also used in the paper I present today. So the first thing we did was to analyze the inflammatory profile of, the, um, of CD and UC patients. And therefore, we did an effects analysis of their peripheral blood mononuclear cells, so the PBMCs. And here you can see the heat map of the results. So down here are the different cell types we analyzed. And here you can see the color code. So in blue, this indicates low frequencies and yellow indicates high frequencies. And here on the right side, you can see in red CD patients and then in white UC patients. And you can see that with this method, we were able to differ between two main groups, so A and B whereas group A can be again separated into AA and AB. And when you now look at the CD patients, you see that there are mainly cluster in group A, so here in red, or more specifically in AB. The UC patients cluster mainly in group B, and both groups are characterized with different cell types. So you can see that in A, there are high frequencies of Th1 and Th2 cells, as well as which B cells, whereas um, group B is more characterized with high frequencies of M1 and CD14, CD163 positive monocytes. So you can see that there are different cell types contributing to the inflammation in CD than in UC. And the main focus of this project was to test if we are not only able to see a difference between UC and CD analyzing PBMCs, but also if our mouse model can differ between both types on cellular level as well as phenotypically. And therefore, we reconstituted NSG mice with PBMCs of patients we also analyzed for this heat map here. And here you can see now the donors we used. So in red, again, are CD donors and in black, the UC donors. And as I already said, we work with NSG mice. And here you can see now the general procedure and outcome of such an in vivo experiment. experiment. So we inject mice with PBMCs isolated from the blood of a donor. And in this case, we had experiments with CD, UC, and non-IBD, so healthy donors. 
And uh, we induced then the symptoms via a rectal ethanol application, so we challenged the mice. And during and at the end of the experiment, we got different scores to evaluate the behavior and the level of inflammation and fibrosis. So we have the clinical score, the colon score, and the histological score. And we also did immune cell profiling of the spleen and the colon and measure the cytokine levels in the colon. And as this journal club is all about the humanized mouse model, I just want to tell you a bit more about the speciality of our model before then going on with the experiments. So the NSG mice have an impaired immune system due to a knockout. And by injecting the PBMCs, we transfer the donor immune profile. And so the inflammation we see is more reflective of the pathological manifestation of IBD. This means that we can see a difference depending on the donor of the injected PBMCs. So we are able to see a difference between patients which are in remission or in an active state of the disease. And this is also why we thought that our model is capable to differentiate between CD and UC. And here you can now see the experimental scheme. So our in vivo experiment had a duration time of 18 days. And we challenged mice two times and scored them during the experiment by looking at their behavior, at their weight, and also their appearance. And these scoring then come together to the um, clinical score. And you can see that after the challenge, there was an increase of the score in all groups. So we observed weight loss for all challenged mice independent of the donor. So we have this increase in the NSG non-IBD group as well as in the NSG-CD and NSG-UC group. Um, but the most pronounced, um, you can see the most pronounced it was in the challenged NSC-UC mice. So there's not only a significant difference between the control and the challenge group, but also between the challenged NSG-CD and challenged NSG-UC mice. So this was the first difference we saw between the both models. The second score we did was the colon score, and therefore we looked at the microscopical appearance of the colon, as you can see it here. So the black bar here down indicates 10 centimeter, and usually the colon should be at least this length or longer. And you can see in the score that there was not really a difference between the control and the ethanol challenge group for the NSG non-IBD mice. And this you can also see in the ex uh, example here. So after the challenge, the colon looks a bit shorter, but it's still tight and has a solid, solid stool. And in contrast, both NSG-UC and NSG-CD mice showed soft or liquid stool as well as dilatation after the ethanol challenge. And this leads then to this higher scores here. And again, it was the most pronounced in the NSG-UC model. Um, and this you can also see again in this example here. So after the ethanol challenge, you have these um, areas where the lotation is visible and also the stool looks softer. The last score we did was the histological score and therefore we stained sec uh, colon sections of each mouse with either hematoxylene eosine, periodic acid shift uh, or mass and gold trichrome. And let me first explain which staining visualize what. So the HE staining is to visualize the alterations in colon architecture, development of edema, and influx of inflammatory cells. The PAS staining show goblet cells, as you can see it here in pink. And the MGT staining is to visualize collagen deposition, which we use as an indicator for fibrosis. And the control group here now is a mouse which was reconstituted with um, PBMCs of a non-IBD donor and it was not challenged. So in fact, this is how a, a healthy colon should look like. And you can see here the crypts, which are very tightly packed and then result in this regular structure. And here um, up there is the um, intact epithelium and here the lamina propria and the submucosa. And you can see on the first side, that in every staining, there's almost no difference between the control and the ethanol challenge group. So we don't see cell influx or an edema, there's no goblet cell loss, and also no collagen deposition. So these results match with our colon score before, which also showed no difference between these two groups. Now, when we look at the NSGUC mice, 
it is very different. So in the control, um, it looks quite healthy. So there's a bit cell influx, as you can see, for example, here, but no edema. We don't see um, goblet cell loss or collagen deposition, but this changes drastically after the challenge. So you can see in this area of the colon, the crypts are completely destroyed and there's this huge edema filled with cells. And the cell influx was not only in the edema, but also in the submucosa here and in the area where the crypts were. Uh, were. And you can also see that there is a total loss of goblet cells and collagen deposition, which is indicated here in green. So when you now compare just the NSG non-IBD mice and the NSG UC mice, you already see in the impact of the donor background. The last step now was to compare it to the NSG CD mice. And also here you can see an impact of the ethanol challenge. So after the challenge, um, you can see cell influx, but um, in contrast to the NSG UC mice, this is only at specific areas and not all of the colon. And in these areas, so for example here and also here, you can see there is a goblet cell loss too. And in general, we saw um, collagen deposition in colons of the ethanol challenged mice, for example, here. Um, so there is a reaction to the ethanol challenge, as we saw before, but not that extreme. And also we can observe a difference just looking at the control. So remember, NSG non-IBD mice showed no phenotype in the control, and the NSG UC mice just a little as we saw some cell influx. Now here in the NSG CD mice, we have a lot of cell influx, um, and not only in between the crypts, for example here, but also in the submucosa, which we didn't saw in the other two groups. And you can also see that in areas where cell influx was, there is some collagen deposition, for example here. So um, now looking at the histological score here, we see a very similar pattern as in the colon score. So the NSG non-IBD mice showed only a very little effect to the ethanol challenge. The NSG UC mice had a great increase after the score after the uh, the great and great increase of the score after the challenge, but the control um, is on the same level than the NSG non-IBD mice. And even though NSG CD mice had an increase after the challenge, the score was already high in the control compared to the other two models. So these results not only show a difference in the phenotype depending on the donor, but also indicates a spontaneous development of CD in our mice, as we saw phenotype without a challenge. And to see if this observation is also visible on the cellular level, we analyzed leukocytes isolated from the spleen. And the most pronounced difference between both groups was shown in M1 and CD14, CD163 positive cells. And you can see that for NSG UC mice, the frequency of both cell types increase after the challenge. So we have this low frequency in the control and then the higher frequency in the challenge for both cell types. In contrast, the NSG CD mice have a high level in both groups. So there's not much of a difference between the control and the ethanol challenge group for both cell types. And we also analyzed the frequency of both uh, monocytes in um, NSG non-IBD mice and found low levels in both the control and the ethanol challenge group. So this indicates that the high frequencies are referred to the UC or CD donor background. And additionally, the high frequencies in the NSG CD control supports the previous observation of a spontaneous phenotype in our CD model. So again, we saw these difference between our two models and repeated the facts analysis for cells of the colon. And as we didn't get enough leukocytes out of one colon, we had to pool cells. So here we analyzed group-wise and not each mouse individually. And because we didn't see a major difference between the control and the challenge group, we decided to just to show the challenge groups here. So like for the spleen, we again saw higher levels of CD14, CD163 positive monocytes. Um, in the NSG CD mice, and the same applies for activated T cells, so for CD4 positive, CD69 positive cells. And the only cell type which frequency was significantly higher in NSG UC mice 
where CD14, CD1A positive cells. So again, we have this difference between CD and UC. And now is the question if this difference is really due to the different donor background. And therefore, I want to show you the, again the PBMC heat map from the beginning and now next to our leukocytes. So here you can see the cell types we analyzed in, in the mouse. And in the beginning, I said that CD patients mainly cluster in group A and UC patients cluster in group B and that both are um, yeah, characterized by different cell types so that the UC patients have higher frequency of M1 and CD14 positive, CD163 positive monocytes. So when you now look at our leukocytes analysis, you can see that it's pretty much the other way around. So here we have um, higher frequencies for both monocytes in the CD model. But this can be explained when you look at the specific donors. So here in red are the CD donors, and you can see that, for example, here, or also these two CD donors had, in fact, high levels of the M1 and the CD14, CD163 positive monocytes. So therefore, our analysis of the mice leukocytes seems very reflective. We also went one step further to test how reflective the model is, and we did a heat map where the analyzed leukocytes of the mouse spleen are shown. And again, here are the cell types we analyzed, and this color code here shows the group of the PBMC donor of the respective mice. So for example, a mouse with um, this profile was reconstituted with, uh, um, with PBMCs of a donor of group B. So. Um, here we test if mice reconstituted with PBMCs of donor of one group, again cluster to one group. And you can see that mice that have been reconstituted with donors from the AA group, so here in red, cluster together in one group. And mice which have um, reconstituted with PBMCs of donors of AB, so in blue, or B in green, clustered together in the second group. This means that unlike an analysis of PBMCs, no distinctions between group A, B, and B can be made. But even though mice didn't cluster in exactly the same groups as their donors, so A, B, um, A, 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 B, and B, they still belong to one of the major groups. So mice reconstituted with um, PBMCs of a donor of group A, B clustered together in one group, and the same goes for the other. So, you can see a pattern and there's not just a random distribution. And this also supports our hypothesis that the immunological profile is preserved in our model. So of course not to 100%, but partially. And one of the last things we did to um, again analyze the difference between our two models um, was to look at the cytokine levels in their colon. So we extract proteins from the colon and analyze them with ELISA. And in total, we looked for four different proteins, and here you can see the two inflammatory markers, so MCP3 and CRP, and both were previously identified as inflammatory markers for the NSG-UC model. For MCP3, you can see that the concentration increased after the ethanol challenge for both models. So the difference between control and um, challenged and the challenge group for NSG-CD mice was hardly significant, whereas it was, it was more pronounced in the NSG UC mice. For CRP, you see a very similar pattern, so the concentration increased after the challenge. And um, even though both models um, has a higher basic level of um, CRP, so higher as MCP3, you can see again that the NSG UC mice showed um, in general higher um, concentrations than the CD um, model. So the UC model shows a more inflammatory phenotype than the NSG CD model, which is also in line with our histological observations. And we also looked for TGF beta and HGF, which are also factors known as markers for UC, but they are more involved in the remodeling process. So for example, HGF um, plays a role in tissue regeneration. For TGF beta, the concentration for the control and the ethanol challenged group are very similar in both models. Um, so 
You can see a slight increase after the challenge, but nothing significant. And in contrast to the previous two inflammatory marker, these remodeling markers here showed higher concentration in the NSG CD model. And that also applies for HGF, as you can see it here very clearly. So in contrast to the inflammatory phenotype we saw in the NSG UC model, we now here have a more remodeling phenotype for the NSG CD mice. And in the beginning, I said that Crohn's disease is often observed with, uh, with fibrosis, and these two markers are also pro-fibrotic markers, so our results are in line with the clinical observation. And the last thing we wanted to investigate was that we wanted to identify cells involved in fibrosis in our NSGCD model, and we decided to look for fibrocytes, as these are one of the first cells um, present after an injury of the epithelium. And we did an immunohistochemistry and characterized them as CD45 positive, COL1A1 positive. So this is a colon section of an NSG CD mouse, and you can see here an area where the crypts were destroyed. And this was also an area where we saw collagen deposition in the MGT staining. So we would describe this as fibrotic. And you can see that there are a lot of CD45 cells distributed all over the colon but especially in these fibrotic areas. And when you now look at the COL1A1 positive cells, um, the distribution looks a bit different, so it's mainly right underneath the epithelium, but in the fibrotic area, you can see it all over. And now when you look at the merge, so this shows us the double positive cells, so the fibrocytes, you can see that almost all cells in these fibrotic areas are fibrocytes. So these results support our hypothesis that fibrocytes drive fibrosis in CD, or at least that they are one of the cell types which drives it. So as a last point, I have here now my summary. Um, so we uh, were able to see a different immunological profile of CD and UC patients after we analyzed their PBMCs. So we had these two or even three groups where the patients clustered in. And we were not only able to see this difference analyzing PBMCs, but also in our NSG model. So the NSG CD mice showed another pathological phenotype than the NSG UC mice. And our results also indicates that these phenotypes are driven by different factors. So we saw different cell types contributing to it as um, we were able to identify uh, contributing to it. And we were also able to identify some cytokines which were involved. And this brings us to the hypothesis that the NSGUC mice exhibit more of an inflammatory phenotype, whereas the NSGCD mice showed a remodeling one. And we could also show that the NSG IBD model partially reflect the immunolo immunological background and inflammatory status of the donor. So we saw high frequencies of the same cell type in the PBMC analysis and the respective mouse leukocytes analysis. And last but not least, we could observe a spontaneous development of a phenotype in our NSG CD control group. So our model seems very reflective and promising for future, uh, future research, but of course it has still limitations, which I also want to discuss with you. So it is still a chimeric model, and not all human cytokines can act on mouse receptors or the other way around. And additionally, there is a phenotypic gap between human and mice regarding the disease. And of course, we are very restricted in the duration time of our study. So here we looked at the mice 18 days after the injection, whereas in humans, the disease develop over years. But nevertheless, our model reflects the donor's background very good. So we don't just have an inflammatory model, but really a Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis model. And to get to this point, a lot of people were involved. I want to now thank. So there's Matthias Siebeck, the head of the group and also the IBD expert, Roswitha Grob, uh, which is our project leader, then Florian Beigel, Leandra Koletzko, and Simone Breiteneicher, which played a huge role in the recruitment of patients. And then, of course, the whole team consisting um, of Anna, Elena, Marietta, and Paula, which all together um, did a great job to make this study happen. And with this, I want to thank you for listening, and I'm now ready for questions.